going to rank my entire eyeshadow palette collection. Now I do love every single eyeshadow palette that I am going to mention today. All of my collection that I have is very well thought out at this point to make sure that I don't have a lot of overlap and that I enjoy everything that I have. I love all of the makeup that I have so I can actually use it and get use of everything. I want to be able to use all of this stuff. So I have done declutters in the past. Some eyeshadow palettes I've gotten rid of were like the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, the original Urban Decay, like little tiny mini with ha has a bunch of neutrals in it. Uh, I had the Too Faced Peach palette. I had a few different palettes that I did declutter a few years back, mainly because they were old and my makeup was sort of shifting and uh, my view on it. But now I ha I'm pretty happy with this collection and I'd love to share with you what I like about them, why I like them, maybe reasons why you might not want to get them or might want to get them. So I hope this video is interesting to you. I have 14 eyeshadow palettes in my collection if you don't include my custom palette that I did with Alate Cosmetics. This is a all natural Canadian company. I love their products. This is their face products here, but this is a bunch of different eyeshadows from different companies. Some ColourPop, some Anastasia of Beverly Hills. I'm not going to talk about this today just because it's not really an eyeshadow palette you can buy. So this is something that I do use and I do love, but these are individual shades. If you're interested, let me know, but today I'm going to talk about my collection. So starting with number 14, this is the New Nude by Huda Beauty. I do love this palette. I bought this for my birthday either in 2019 or 2020, I'm thinking. And I do love this palette. The color scheme is everything I like in a palette. I love pinky browns. Like pinky mauves are my favorite eyeshadows to wear. I love them so much. But I do have a few reasons why this is at the bottom. Even though it's probably my most used palette of 2020, 2021, because I kind of got most of these palettes in the later half of like 2021. I got quite a few like ColourPop palettes in the summertime and then I just got like a few for Christmas. So that's kind of where I'm at of why I ranked this the way I did, but I do love this palette. I got lots of use out of it, lots of use. As you can see, I've hit pan on the concealer, I've hit pan on this shade, almost on this shade, I have on this shade, and I do love a lot of these, but why this is at the bottom is because this shade here and this shade here, these two, are beautiful, and I combine them a lot, and they're my most used shades in the palette, however, they're very similar. They almost look identical, like the lighter version like one's just a bit darker, they're the same tone, they're just one's a little bit darker, but I feel like you could just build that up. And when you're considering such an, like a more expensive palette and so many different colors, you really want every single shade to be used. You want to be able to use every single shade. So not only are these two similar, but I find like these are a little bit similar, this is a bit darker. These two glitters, I can't use these at all these have no use in my repertoire because they look the exact same they're glitter shades they look the exact same and i just find that they don't perform very well so i have a feeling i'm just not going to get very much use out of these and this concealer shade i mean i I, only, I didn't use it as a concealer i only used it to like maybe cut crease and stuff like that but it's used up it got gunked up anyway so it's not the best use of a pan either this shade I've used up just because if there's a bare shade in any eyeshadow palette, it's usually the one I've hit pan on first. But other than my few complaints of some things being kind of too similar or maybe misplaced, I think this eyeshadow palette is still very, very beautiful and I would recommend it like if you do like these shades. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. If you can get it on sale, awesome, but I love this eyeshadow palette. However, I know that the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette, which looks beautiful, definitely eyeing it maybe one day on sale, but genuinely I think it would be better than this, but giving you what you want from this palette. So as much as I loved this in 2021, that is why it is at the bottom. 
Next up is a ColourPop palette, and I, it was kind of hard to rank this because I do love all my palettes, but this is Mint To Be by ColourPop. I love mint shades, I love blue shades, I'm really not afraid to wear color on my eyes. The only reason why this is on, like, number 13 is because these shimmer shades here, these four shimmer shades, though they look very different, and they are, they are different. When you swatch them and when they are on your eyes, they look very similar. So they're just almost not different enough. I know this one's kind of brighter, this one's kind of darker, but once you swatch all of them, I just find that they're very similar on the eyes, especially once you have the crease colors going on. Um, but I think there's a great range of light to mid tones and dark tones, so you can really get some depth in the palette still, so you could change up the looks that way, but I just, I guess I just wished to see a little bit more difference in the shimmer shades. But other than that, I love mints. These look really beautiful on like brown eyes. Um, mint is just a really soft version of blue eyeshadow and I, I really really do like this palette it's just it's very much all the same thing so I mean if you know that going in buying this that it's going to be very similar of all the same thing then for sure that's great but yeah I do like this palette still I'm glad I have it in my collection so next up is a palette, another one by ColourPop, and I do love ColourPop's formula and I love their eyeshadows, but the only reason I got this was because I'm kind of a big Sailor Moon fan. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily have picked this out for the color story. The color story is, um, it's it's lovely like this first like neutral half is gorgeous you know these purp this purple this shade like the pink it's very beautiful there's gold in there a nice little everyday shade but this row here is just where it throws me off and i find that this coral and this pink they look really similar though one's more coral and one's more pink they again pull very similar once they're on the eyes um, this purple shade doesn't blend the best. Yellow, I, I just don't find myself ever reaching towards a yellow. I'm glad I have one yellow in my entire collection, but I didn't necessarily buy this for the color story because, like I said, I like to use every single shade in all of my eyeshadow palettes to actually get use out of them, and I just find that I'm not getting as much use as this as I'd like. Um, I'm kind of, you know, locked to certain shades, but I do like experimenting, so I'm happy I have them in my collection, and I will get use out of it, but that is why this one is number 12. But I do, I do really love this palette, um, because it is Sailor Moon. My name is Serena Moon, legally by birth, and I was born in 95, which is when this came to Canada, the show. And it's just kind of a big deal in my life, and I'm really, really happy I have this. It's just so, so stinking cute. Number 11 is another palette by ColourPop. It is In a Trance. Now, I love this color scheme. I was really excited for this one. It is purple, pink, and blue, which is a great color scheme if you are going to have a palette like this where it is still kind of very similar tones there's still three different ranges you could go with you could go pink you could go purple like this shade here and this purple here are beautiful together on the eyes just those two on the eyes it's it's super super beautiful and this glitter even though I know a lot of people don't like press glitters in palettes I understand why they are technically not eye safe however I do like glitter and I do get use out of it. I don't want it to go to waste. And this glitter is beautiful. It is a iridescent clear glitter with rainbow reflex. It's gorgeous. If you see a little bit black there, it's only because I put it over a black smoky eye and I kind of dirtied it up. It should look a little bit cleaner, cleaner than that when you get yours, but I do actually really like the glitter. And uh, I love the purple, like I said. And I was most excited for the blue, but the reason why this is number 11 is because 
I find that these two blues do not blend very well together and I have trouble with this palette every time I use it. Like I have to work extra hard to get this to work. So as much as I love the color scheme, I just find these two shades particularly, like a couple of the mattes, just like extra hard to blend. So as much as I love this palette, that is why it is number 11. Number 10 is a very beautiful and special palette that I just got recently for Christmas with a gift card. And as much as I love it, the only reason why it's number 10 is because I just don't think most people are going to get use out of the color scheme. And they are a little bit tricky to work with. And I think that that's going to steer a lot of people away. So I'm putting it here to rank it to help others. So as much as I love it and it makes my heart happy, I just want to be honest with this ranking. And that is the new holiday collection that just came out by Melt Cosmetics, the Amore e Mary Posas eyeshadow or pressed pigment palette. I love it. It's beautiful. The outside is beautiful. The meaning of the palette is beautiful. I do recommend watching the video that she made about it. Her dog that passed away is right there in one of the butterflies and that just makes my heart so sad and but warmed at the same time. It's it's such a beautiful meaning of life and death and how beautifully intricate life can be. So I, I do really love the meaning behind it and the packaging. I love butterflies, I love roses. They're actually a big part of my life. So I do really love that about it. But I do love the inside too. I love this color scheme. It is gorgeous. It is very holiday with the red and the green, but I love those shades kind of anytime, so that's great. The only reason why this is at 10, other than the color scheme being a little intimidating for most people, because I could understand why most people don't want to play with like the brighter greens or these reds or these purples or even these corals, because this can be a little bit intimidating, but I wanted color in my repertoire. I don't have a lot of color in my repertoire and this is not something I would have gotten on my own but because I had some money for Christmas I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to try this out. It's my first palette that I've ever tried by Milk Cosmetics and I know a lot of their palettes are hit and miss with how the mattes can blend and how the shimmers perform. So far I think all of the shimmers in here are gorgeous and perform beautifully However, I did have a cup, a little bit of trouble with these green mattes. I used uh, these two and this green matte to create a holiday look that I did over on my Instagram and TikTok. And I just found that they were really hard to blend. Once you started to build in that darker shade, the more you blend and the more you blend, it was like the patchier got. So I had to really, really work and then this is what I topped it with and really blended it in. And it looked really beautiful in the end. Like it wasn't a mess, it wasn't a disaster. It still looked really beautiful, but it is just something I was a little dis disappointed in is it just could have performed just that much better a little bit. However, the red, which you would think would be a really hard shade to blend, actually blended really beautifully. And I did another look on my TikTok and Instagram with the red and the gold, and that turned out beautifully. I haven't experimented too much with the purples or anything like that yet. I have with these neutral shades. I think it's a lovely palette, but just keep that in mind. If you're not into color and you're not really well versed with playing with makeup, this might not be a great beginner friendly palette. But other than that, if you're really into this sort of thing, I would still recommend. Next at number nine is the Soft Glam Palette by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. I got this palette, I think, for my birthday of 2020, so I must have gotten the new nude one in 2019, but this was a gift to myself a while back now, and I really do love it. It's a really great classic neutral palette. If you didn't really own a lot of eyeshadow palettes, I would highly recommend this one just because it has everything that you could really need. It's got that bare shade, it's got a black, um, it's got your gold, it's got your lighter tones, it's got your darker tones, it's got some cool tones, it's got warm tones. So in that sense, it is well balanced. However, I will say, is three golds necessary? Not in my opinion. 
these two shades, uh, Glistening and Fairy, even though Fairy has a slightly pinker undertone, these look exactly the same on the eyes. So you basically just got two of the same shade to just two golds to work with, which if you really like gold, that's cool. Um, and then this is this shade here is just like a much darker version of a gold. Also, if you already own a black in your repertoire, a black eyeshadow, you're most likely not going to need an extra one around. These you can always use more of, so it doesn't necessarily take up waste in a palette, but I think a black does because I just, I don't ever really reach for a black in my eyeshadow looks and I have a single, a black single eyeshadow that I use, so that can be a waste in some people. But other than that, other than just kind of there being too many golds, I just find that the range isn't there. But one shade I have trouble with is actually this shade Rustic. So out of the mattes, I do have trouble blending this. Every single time I want to go in with this, like thinking it's just going to be like this easy neutral look, I can just grab this palette, it's going to be quick and easy. I find myself struggling so hard with this shade Rustic, which was one of the more cooler tone browns, which I prefer cooler tones over the warmer tones. So I try to reach for this all the time, but it just struggles. It just ends up patchy. It doesn't matter really what primer, I, my eyeshadow primer I use. It just kind of turns out patchy. So keep that in mind, it is a great beginner palette, but there are just a couple discrepancies that I have with it. But other than that, it's nice. <laughs> so next up at number eight is actually quite a fun one. This is really unique and very beautiful. However, it is not available anymore. I don't think you can get this one. So I apologize about that. Maybe they'll bring it back in the future because I know they did that with another one of their palettes, which I'm going to talk about also. But this is the Ether Beauty Joshua Tree Desert Matte Palette. So Ether Beauty is a incredible, all natural, like 100% natural, like recyclable packaging. There's no mirror. Everything is like talc free. The pigments are natural. It's an incredible formula. I really do love Ether Beauty. Um, they don't have this one, like I said, anymore on their website, but I have a feeling they'll either come out with it again or come out with something really similar at least because they did that with another one of their palettes. This is all matte and there's no shimmers in it, so that's kind of why it's- that is the main reason why it's ranked lower at number eight, just because it is all matte. So I can't use this and just this, unless I'm going for a matte look. And of course, but technically if I wanted to do like a full thing with shimmer, I, I have to go somewhere else for it. But other than that, I find it a great blend of product, like of colors. It's a great blend of colors. I find it's a great blend of colors. You have an everyday color, a really nice deep color. I find it... I find that it's a beautiful array of colors. You've got your everyday shades, you've got your base, you've got your deepening shade, you've got your transitions and everyday browns, got this nice ready one, some warmth in there, nice brown, like you have really everything you need to build like a full beautiful look with pops of color. So this yellowy mustard, this periwinkly shades, these are beautiful greens and this is like a nice dark teal. So I love this palette, but yes, it is a little bit kind of almost just like an addition palette. It's not something you can create a whole lot of looks with um, on its own, other than just some really nice, cool, matte looks. But I do really like this palette. I really do. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, it's unique. That's what I really like about it. It's unique. It's based by nature, like it's inspired by nature. And that is what I love about it, and it's all natural. So I highly recommend anything by Ether Beauty. Um, I'm sorry that you can't get this one anymore, but keep an eye out for anything like this from them. At number seven, we have another Anastasia of Beverly Hills palette. This one is the Modern Renaissance. This one, I think I've had this palette actually the longest out of all of my eyeshadow palettes. I think I got this back in 2018. And I have used it a lot because it is my main palette that I had for a really long time, especially once I did that declutter. And my 
favorite eyeshadow in almost my entire collection almost is this shade Vermeer. It's really beautiful. It's, it's, I hit pan on it and it's just this like beautiful everyday perfectly pink pearly shimmer. I love it very very much. I love the cool tones in here. Um, this shade Warm Taupe is a matte shade. I actually have it in a single by ABH and I love it. I use both all the time. It's a nice warm taupe so it's a warm cool tone so it's a beautiful beautiful crease shade this primavera shade here is actually my favorite gold in my entire collection i really think or at least one of it's a gorgeous gorgeous gold and i love these deeper shades like it's got a great balance all the transitions you need the only thing is it's just these two venetian shades are almost identical like these look at them like they're identical they're this they're the same like i just find and they're also the least reached for shades this is kind of a pop of color so when you're going for neutrals like this isn't necessarily what you're going for so only one is suffice to add that funness but there's two and i just find that i reach for them the least and the kind of the transition shades are a little bit similar also there's only two main shimmers in the entire palette which means that no matter what crease shade that you do or crease look that you do, it's going to be the same two shimmer shades. It's either going to be gold or it's going to be like a champagne. The only other shade you could use is maybe this kind of satin matte tempura shade um, or this bronze shade, but this bronze shade is not a very good shimmer. It's almost like drugstore or old school shimmers where there's just not like a lot of shimmer to them like they're almost just satin um but it's that would be like a nice everyday shade you just pop that on and nothing else you just buff it into the crease you'd need one shade one and done but just keep that in mind as nice as this is um they could have utilized uh, some shades differently, but I do appreciate what it's inspired by. It is inspired by the modern renaissance So or by the renaissance. It's just like a modern day version of it. So in that sense, it really is an awesome palette so. At number six, I have another ether beauty palette This is the rose quartz palette and this is the original rose quartz palette They have a new one that doesn't have this elastic band it's just like a really nice soft closure because they wanted everything to be recyclable in their palettes. And this is the Rose Quartz one. It is very cool toned. It's got lots of shimmers in comparison to the other palette, which I know it's all matte, but it has a lot of shimmers considering. But it's beautiful. I love cool tones. This silver is gorgeous. This rose gold is beautiful. This like white shimmery shade I really, really do enjoy this palette. I find that those are great, great variations in a palette, like a light, a medium, and a dark, the silver, the rose golds, and then there's even a regular gold. There's these fun kind of duochrome shades. These are, I feel like all three of these are almost duochrome shades. This purple leaning blue, this pink leaning purple, and this like grungy shade. I just find that it's a really, really nice palette. I really like this palette a lot. Um, I find that maybe why it's number six is because there's maybe not enough mattes. <laughs> I guess I'm just being picky here. I'm trying to rank it the best that I can, but I would say that maybe I could do without maybe one of these shades. And like even this one, like this is a satin, a satin shade that I just find could either be a matte or another shimmer, you know? So other than that, that's just me nitpicking it. It's still a really unique, beautiful palette. And they didn't have this for a really long time after they sold out and then they revamped it. And now they have a mini version, which is really beautiful if you want the shades, but you don't want to get the whole thing. And then they have a new and improved version of the Rose Quartz, which I'm hoping they do that to all their palettes, but we'll see. So I really like the Rose Quartz palette by Ether Beauty, and also there are Rose Quartz gems infused into these eyeshadows. It's amazing! <laughs> so we're at top 
five now. We're at number five. So we're getting into the good stuff. My favorites that I currently have. This is On Cloud Blue by Colourpop. It is part of their monochromatic nine pan series and it is a beautiful all blue palette. I would say that these are mid-tone blues. They aren't mint, they're true blues, like the mint to be palette that I showed you. There's also a, a blue moon palette by Colourpop, which I was debating when I ordered this. I was truly debating like, do I get blue moon? Do I get this one? It was very, very difficult. But looking at swatches, I just ended up going with this one because as much as I love the darker blues, these lighter blues were just calling me. I loved them so much and I do love them so much. I love this palette. Baby blue is my favorite color. So it's my favorite color in general. I love it. It makes me very, very happy. So to be able to put baby blue all over my eyes just makes me a very happy person. And it's... It can be summery, it can be winter. I love this shade, it's my favorite shade in the palette. This matte is beautiful. Um, this is a great little you know, inner corner highlighter all over the lid. This is a beautiful, uh, it is a pressed glitter again, but it is just a pure blue one and it's gorgeous. I did like a wintry look with this in the crease or these two in the crease, this all over my lid, this on my inner corner and then the glitter on top. It's beautiful and this you get like a really much like darker more true blue look. I love this palette. Yes, it is very similar. It's all the same sort of look, but I just find that you get you do have like a good variation in shimmers, a good variation in mattes that you can get a few looks out of this and I love blue, so that is why it's at number 5. I really like this palette and I've also heard that Blue Moon's not the easiest to blend. So if you're thinking about Blue Moon or Cloud Blue, though the Blue Moon has the darker blues, the more true blues, navies, etc., I feel like you could at least achieve something really, really similar with this. That's number five, that's on Cloud Blue, love it. Up next at number four is another and my last ColourPop palette that I own. This is The Child. It was a part of the Star Wars collection. I did not get this because of Star Wars, like for example why I got the Sailor Moon one. I'm not really a big Star Wars fan, I don't think I've even watched it in my adulthood, but I do really like this palette. I got this strictly for the color scheme, so unlike the Sailor Moon one that I got because it was Sailor Moon related, I got this one for the color scheme, <laughs> even though I didn't like the Sailor Moon color scheme. It's still a good palette, I still really like the Sailor Moon. But this one just is really lovely. I love greens, just like I love the blues. I love earthy, natural shades. And when I look at this, I'm like, this is a perfect palette. It's perfect, it's beautiful. Even though my favorite shades are like rosy tones and stuff like that, I still think this is so beautiful the way that it is. It's got those everyday browns right away. These are great, they blend beautifully. They're perfect neutral blouse. Uh, browns that anyone could use in their collection. This is a nice greeny silver. This is a nice like uh, white gold I would say. This is quite true gold, almost glittery. And this shimmery green is beautiful. I've done an all matte look with just this all over my lids and it, that was really lovely. These two in the crease with this on top, one of my favorite looks that I do. I love it. I just, I really think, I hope they make this permanent because it's just so beautiful. They should do something like this in the future, like greens and browns. They work, they, they do great. I love this palette, it's so nice. I think you can hear my dog dreaming. Okay, we're at number three and number three is the Norvina palette by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. It's my third palette that I own by ABH and it's my favorite and it is the one that I actually got most recently. So Soft Glam and Modern Renaissance I've had for a while. This I technically just got from for Christmas from my husband. So though it is new in my collection, it does warrant being at the top because I really try to play with my palettes and get a lot of use out of them when I first get them. So I have tried most of the shades in the palette now. 
and I just find that it's their most unique palette other than maybe their like more fun Riviera Alyssa Edwards those ones I didn't really have an interest in getting any of those but out of the three at least that I have this is definitely the most fun one these purples these pinks I love purple and pink so I love that there is that pop of yet wearable color there's wearable color in here which is really nice so for the average person if you don't have a lot but you do want to kind of play with those wearable colors like pinks and purples but still have a lot of neutrals i'd highly recommend this one and it's got a good balance of golds unlike the previous ones i mentioned where the kind of balance of shimmers were off i find the shimmers in here are awesome i mean you've got all shimmers on the top and all shimmer, uh, all mattes on the bottom, which is perfect. Having the mattes and the shimmers laid out in that way where they're just laid one on top of each other makes it actually really easy to create eyeshadow looks. It's almost easier to look at. And I find that their variations of mattes are great. You've got lights, you can build these shades up too. So you can go really light and make any of these transition shades or just keep building and adding them to be darker. Uh, I find that there's a great balance of warm to cool tones. This Dreamer shade is a beautiful champagne. This is a gorgeous gold shade. There's that pink, there's that rose gold, there's that purple. And then these nice, more bronze shades. This is almost like a purple brown, which is really beautiful. So I really, I've been really enjoying this palette, even though I haven't had it for long. I think it's a beautiful color scheme and they are blending beautifully as well. So I highly recommend the Norvina palette by ABH. Now number two is technically the palette that I've had for the least amount of time, but I have to mention it just because it is everything that I would want in a color scheme. It's just so beautiful. Uh, it has the least amount of shades, but I do love it, and that is number two at Mini Retro by Natasha Denona. It is a little, tiny little thing, and there's only five shadows, like I said, but it is truly beautiful and unique. I just find this color scheme to be beautiful. Now, I am a big fan of pinky shades. A lot of my palettes, though I try very hard to curate, curate my collection to be well-versed and have multiple colors and not a lot of duplicates from each other so that I can get use out of everything and I really truly enjoy everything that I have, shades that I might buy a little bit more of are my favorites and those might be blue, those might be um, the pinkier shades, the mauvey shades. And like I said, I love green shades too. So to have this little greeny gray shade with this mauvey pinky shade and this gorgeous champagne -y gold shade Galaxia, this has like a rainbow reflect in it. It's actually what I have on my lids today is just this in my crease and this on my lids. And it's so beautiful. Like this has an insane reflect shimmer. This industrial shade's also beautiful. I love it. It is more cool tone, but I do prefer cool tones. This pink is also really, really lovely as well. Though you don't get too many shades, I do feel like you actually can create a lot of looks. Some Natasha Denona palettes have more mattes than shimmers, and I don't really think that that works for such a small palette. If you're gonna have such a small palette, you should have more shimmers than mattes because the shimmer, especially if those shimmers are quite different from each other, this is pink, this is more like skin tone neutral, this is going to be your nighttime kind of more bold silver. It works when you're when you're you have those varieties because I can put this in my crease, I can build this up and make it even darker, and then I can do this really light, or I could build this up even darker, I can combine the two, and you're gonna get more like a brown shade. There's actually more you can do with this than you think. And it's highly rated. It's my like first time ever trying Natasha Denona's formula, but I have been eyeing this color scheme for a while. And then the more I heard about people saying how much they loved this one in particular, that's when I knew that I was gonna get this. So I got this with another like gift card or money that I got from Christmas and I'm so happy with it. I love it and I would recommend it. Now, number one, I am so excited for. 
I did just get it in November during the Sephora VIB Rouge sale or no it wasn't through the sale it was like a little bit after that and they had this palette on for half off it's originally 88 Canadian and it was on for 44 Canadian and I've been eyeing it for years so I am so happy that I have it in my life and funny enough it's a Huda Beauty palette so the new nude was at the bottom but the Mercury retrograde is at the top at number one and there's a few reasons why it's the color scheme I mean this is just everything that I could ever want in a palette this is truly when I look at this it makes me so happy it has everything that I really truly could need in a palette, like for the most part. I mean, maybe other than your basic brown ne like neutrals, but I don't wear basic brown neutrals all the time and I have quite a few of them in my collection. So having this is so perfect. I think it's the color scheme is so beautiful. This gold, for example, is just so unique of a gold. It just has this crazy reflect. I'm not even a huge fan of gold shades and this gold glitch is quite, quite beautiful. This moon shade, I think it's called Super Moon, is beautiful as well. It has just this white shimmer, but it's got a blue and pink reflect. Uh, this rose shade Gal Galaxy, it's called, is super beautiful this glittery shade it's actually a glitter that i like unlike the glitters i mentioned at the beginning in the new nude palette weren't really the best this performs beautifully it performs beautifully on its own and it performs beautifully over top of any of the other shades this is these are great for night like you got this dark blue you've got this silver glitter you've got this purple you've got this pink shimmer you've got these everyday shades um, some deepening shades. You don't have a lot. Most people's complaint with this palette is that you don't have a lot of dark deepening shades. You pretty much only have this shade, which pulls quite purple. So it's going to pull that gray eat purple on most of your looks. So keep that in mind with this palette. But other than that, I, I do think it has a decent balance. These are more warm. Like these two shades give you that warmth. These shades are giving you the cool tones. Um, this pop of blue, this is one of the nicest blues that I have ever seen in my palettes. It's just got a gorgeous um, undertone. So I love this palette. Everything performs beautifully. Everything blends beautifully. And I highly recommend the Mercury Retrograde. So that's it for my entire eyeshadow palette <laughs> ranking video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you thought that it was interesting. You learned something. Maybe it helped you. <laughs> Cosmo! This is my dog Cosmo, by the way. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you next time.